Well, I, I just want to say thank you to, to all the Hilltopper fans that came out and supported our team and came to Diddle Arena and watched them play over the last week. Uh, you know, what our kids have done uh, this year has been pretty special and what our fan base did this past week was pretty special as well and um, it's what makes me proud to to be a Hilltopper all my life and uh, I, I couldn't be uh, more appreciative uh, for all the people that came out and made this past week really uh, really really special for our kids so with that questions how do you shift now just to focus on yeah, you know, it's we were just talking about it as a staff in there. Um, we really just got to get our legs back under us. It, it it takes a physical toll, but it takes an emotional toll on you as well. And um, now we have to, you know, kind of just keep them fresh. You know, it, as my granddad used to say, the hay's in the barn a little bit at this point. And, you know, it's it's about um, just kind of keeping them fresh and uh, focusing in on little things that maybe aren't real physically taxing things in practice every day, uh, but just little things that might mean a point here or there and um, and try to recalibrate and, and go down and take on another really big challenge uh, down at Rice. Playing Middleton for the third time this season, mm -hmm. does that pose any sort of extra challenge to face the team for the third time? Yeah, no, um, you know, it's a little bit unique because we only played, you know, two teams in our league twice already, and so we're playing them for a third time, so we'll know each other very well. Um, but everybody kind of knows who each other is, especially with this day and age of technology and, you know, availability of film and all those kinds of things. There's very few secrets at this, at this juncture. And so, um, you know, this time of year, I really – it's almost like it comes full circle for me. Early in the year, I'm really focused on our side of the net. And then as we get into conference play, I start focusing on our opponent a lot. And then when we get to tournament time, I start bringing that focus back to our side of the net again because there aren't a lot of surprises. And it's, it's about us doing what we do well. We're not going to reinvent ourselves a lot at this, at this point in the season. So, uh, so that's what our focus will be this week. You've talked a lot this season about you and your team enjoying being back in the underdog role. Mm -hmm. And now you've done undefeated in conference play, you have the number one seed in the conference tournament. Is there a challenge to continue to get that message across to your team to continue to have that underdog mentality or that have you noticed they still have that? Well, we, uh, they've kind of taken whatever has come at them, you know, and, um, you know, we, we understand that we're the one with the biggest bullseye on our back uh, this weekend, but, but because of what we've done, but, but also because of what they've done, our kids can go down there. You know, so many times this time of year when you go to conference tournament, it's do or die. And, you know, that can really make you tight going in if things start going wrong. And our kids have played themselves into a position where uh, win or lose the, the conference Conference USA tournament, we're going to be playing in the NCAA tournament, and uh, I can't. That is a massive advantage going into the tournament to know that you can. It, it certainly won't make our kids complacent. I promise you. When there's a when there's a trophy on the line, we'll be ready. But it does allow them to go down there and relax because you know a lot of the upsets and things that you see in tournament time, you know, across sport is about the team with the target on their back, kind of getting tight. You know, when they get pressured early or fall behind early, and you know our kids have played themselves into a position where you know they have the security of knowing that we're going to be playing in December uh, and and that's a big advantage you know I've, I've been on teams here that that haven't had that luxury and I've been on teams that do and it'll allow us to just go down there and try to put our best foot forward we we know what a challenge it's going to be uh, to go down there Conference USA has been very good beyond Western Kentucky and Rice this year and and we've got two tough challenges before we would even get back to uh, another matchup with them but when and if that happens certainly going in there and, and getting them for a second time on their home court uh, would be a massive challenge, but uh, it's going to be a fun week. Our kids are looking forward to it. Travis, to have that kind of comfort knowing that you will be playing in the NCAA tournament, at the beginning of the season, did you think you would be in that kind of position hmm. heading into the conference? Well, we always try to put a schedule together what, that will allow it if we play well. Uh, that's why we always play such a challenging schedule. Uh, but with such a young team, look, the one thing you know you're going to get with a young team is inconsistency. And this team has kind of flown in the face of that a little bit. We've been uh, amazingly consistent throughout the year. And so, uh, no, I, you know, I didn't know that – I knew that the schedule would allow it. I didn't know if our team would be ready to, to get themselves there. But, you know, I'm going to say again now that, that we've secured that regular season championship, I'm telling you, I, I take so much more pride in a regular 
regular season championship than I ever do a tournament because it just says so much about getting themselves ready to play for a two, two and a half month period. And um, I, I couldn't be more proud of that. And so, you know, we talk about having different seasons and now that season's behind us and, and we go into the conference tournament and, and have an opportunity to uh, try to win another championship. What does this particular regular season championship say about this team with all the question marks mm -hmm. at the end of the season that have Pretty much all been answered. Well, that's I think that's what it says. It says that this group has answered every question that was out there, you know, uh, since this time last year, you know, and um, they they've stuck together. They're they're talented, but we knew we knew we were going to be talented. There's a lot of talented teams that, that don't win championships, and uh, but they're together and they play for each other and they uh, are about being coached and uh, they're tough. They've allowed me to coach them. You know, that's that's one of the things that I talk about with our teams every year early in the year is are you going to allow me to coach you and that sounds simple but it's not it's not simple because allowing yourself to be coached has a lot to do with hearing things you don't want to hear and being pushed out of your comfort zone and um, doing things that don't always make sense to you and you know some some teams start thinking they have a different way or this isn't necessary or why is he on me and some some teams you know are all in with trust and um and this team has allowed me to coach them, which has allowed them to have a pretty special run so far. With this team, you had a lot of the upperclassmen returning, but you also had Logan Kale, not mm -hmm. Udine, Peyton mm -hmm. Breeze. I mean, what does it say about the newcomers that they really bought into this culture? It seems well, I think it says a lot about about all of the above. I think it says a lot about our returning players because they took a bunch of newcomers and helped them understand what it means to be a part of this program and understand that it's not about individuals, it's about team success and understand that it's about being coached hard and, and wanting to be great and wanting to be coached hard. And, and then it's about those newcomers coming in and, and buying into that culture in a short period of time and, and being on board. And, you know, there's an adjustment period with that but you know the the best the best way to learn those things is to see it reflected in your returning players, and and I think all of our newcomers have been able to do that. You touched a bit in your opening statement about the turnout for the last few games, and the last time we were here, you challenged everybody to show mm -hmm. up across those last two games. Over 2,500 people mm -hmm. in the arena. Just how much did that mean to you and your team? Still get chills thinking about it. Uh, you know, again, 25 years ago there were 11 people in the stands, and five of them were my family. And um, but I just this sport is is an amazing sport to watch in person, and it's exciting and it's it's an athletic display and um, you know th this arena has been a pretty special place over the years for our basketball programs and and it was for volleyball this weekend and, and it was it was just really cool to see and and I hope it's a sign of of things to come you know moving forward I I say all the time come one time and I have a feeling you'll come back and and we certainly hope moving forward into next year that, that there's a, a new group of Hilltopper volleyball fans that are going to come back and, and watch our kids play.